Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to discuss Android Native Development Kit or NDK in short. The name Native Development Kit comes from the fact that this tool allows you to bundle native machine code inside your APKs. Which of course brings up the question immediately, what's native machine code? Well, to explain what native machine code, I will show you this diagram. And those of you who watched my previous Android Beat series about Android Runtime will immediately recognize that. That's basically the process of delivering compiled Kotlin or Java code to your users to be executed as an Android application. Now, I will not go over all the aspects of this flow in this video. Instead, I will just post a link to my previous Android Beat about Android Runtime. But on a very high level, we take Java or Kotlin code, convert it to class files, convert them to DEX files, package them into APK. Then those APK are being distributed to our users. When on users' devices, the system takes out the DEX files from the APK, feeds them into Android runtime, which compiles them into machine code, native machine code, and that is fed into CPU for execution. And that's the native machine code. So native machine code is the final result of all these complex processes, which is understandable by a specific CPU on user's devices. And now let's consider Another flow, which starts during the build process as well, and we take C++ files, we compile them directly into native machine code and bundle that native machine code into our APKs, which are again being distributed to our users. And then uh, on Android devices, the native machine code is being taken out of the APKs and then fed directly into CPUs. And this flow that you see on your screens right now is exactly the flow of using Android Native Development Kit to execute some native machine code on users' devices. And since this diagram looks so much simpler than the previous one, a very legitimate question to ask at this point will be, why bother with Java or Kotlin at all? If this is so simple to just, you know, write some C++ code, convert it into machine code directly, and then distribute the machine code, then why we need all the additional complexity of the standard like approach of using Java and Kotlin in Android applications? Very reasonable question. I am glad you asked. So let's start with the drawbacks of the native code. The first drawback is that uh, native writing native code is much more complex and error prone than using Java or Kotlin. And probably the biggest drawback in this context is manual memory management. So when we write Java or Kotlin code that is being executed later on the Android runtime virtual machine, then we basically benefit from so-called automatic garbage collection. You have nothing of this sort if you write, for example, C or C++ code that is later compiled into native code. You manage the memory yourself. Any error, any mistake that you do in this context will probably just crash your application and you'll have really fun time looking for the source code of these crashes. So that's something that native code suffers from. In addition, native code features much more complex toolchain. So for example, if you know what cross compilation is and how different compilers support different cross compilation targets, etc., all of this complexity is inherent to using native code inside your Android applications. Most of the Android framework, the framework that we use to draw pixels on the screen basically, is written in uh, Java or Kotlin. And therefore, if you use native code, most of that functionality will not be available to you. So there are some parts of Android framework that expose specific behavior, specific APIs to your native code, but most of the Java APIs that Android framework features will not be available to you in your native code. So no luck there. In addition, you will lose access to the overall Java ecosystem. For example, you will not be able to use Java libraries like JSON, JUnit, etc. And arguably, Java ecosystem is much better suited to writing high-level GUI applications than, for example, C++ ecosystem. Well, that's my opinion, but I think it's not very controversial. Java ecosystem was kind of built with the idea of writing client-side applications, and therefore it's much better suited than, for example, C++ ecosystem, which is more targeted towards performance critical, lower level stuff. And in addition, native code is CPU architecture specific. So if you compile for, let's say, ARM 64 bits, then that native code will not be able to run on ARM 32 bits system. And therefore, if you want to target several types of CPU architectures, which is 
quite a common use case, then you will need to compile for each of these architectures separately and distribute either one bigger APK file that contains native code for all those targets, or alternatively, you will need to distribute multiple APKs, each targeted at a specific CPU architecture. So that's much more complex, much more involved distribution process than what you can do with uh, Java or Kotlin code that you compiled into DEX files. And of course, all these drawbacks are very, very serious, and therefore you should not kind of jump into native code right away just because it sounds cool. But native code works and NDK exists, and therefore there should be some benefits as well. And let's discuss those benefits. First benefit that most Android developers think about when they hear the term NDK, if they know what it is, that will be performance. And I put an asterisk here because performance is actually a very tricky and very involved topic. And anything you would say about performance should be contextualized. You should provide specific context to any statement about performance. So you cannot just say NDK is better, native code is better in terms of performance, because in most cases, even if it is better, then those benefits will be completely inconsequential to your applications. And in some cases, the performance might, might be much worse even. And therefore, in general, I wouldn't say that native code is more performant than let's say compiled Java or Kotlin code, but that in some situations, you can optimize your code much better using native code. For example, if you would like to mine Bitcoin on your users' devices, then native code will probably be much better suited for that specific purpose, even though, of course, you probably shouldn't do that <laughs> at all. In addition, if you use native code, for example, if you write C or C++ code, it gives you access to the entire C or C++ ecosystem. And this ecosystem contains a lot of very useful stuff. For example, in one of my projects, I had to perform media type conversions on the client side for reasons that are unrelated to this discussion. And for that, I had to use FFmpeg library, which is very powerful, very mature open source library that actually allows you to work with all kinds of media stuff. In another project, I had to implement so-called uh, zero knowledge proof protocol. And for that, I could use Lib crypto library, which is a very popular cryptographic library implemented again for C, C++ source code. And therefore, when you find yourself in a situation when you need to leverage one of those powerful libraries coming from the C, C++ ecosystem, NDK will allow you to do that. Another benefit is that you can reuse code on different platforms. Now, this is a very tricky uh, argument to make because before that, in the drawbacks of the native code, we say that native code is CPU specific. So it's a drawback. But now I say that you can reuse native code on different platforms. So it's kind of difficult to square these things together. So let's just quickly explain the difference. Yes, native code is CPU specific. However, it's not framework or platform specific. And therefore, for example, if you have Android applications and iOS applications that execute on the same CPU architecture, let's say ARM 64 bits, then you can actually write native code, you can build native code that will execute for both Android and iOS applications the same way. And therefore, you can share, let's say, C++ code between Android and iOS projects in this manner. And that's actually is being done. It's not just theoretical. So you can reuse code on different platforms as long as they target the same CPU architectures. And in addition, one very important benefit for big major Android projects is that native code is more obfuscated than let's say DEX files. As you might know, it's very simple to decompile DEX files and get out everything that's there. And there are very knowledgeable people who can decompile, modify, recompile, and then distribute, let's say your application as their own application with slight changes to the source code that they decompiled. It is much more difficult <laughs> to do that with your native code. And therefore, if your application contains some very interesting uh, proprietary algorithms, or let's say some API keys that you would like to obfuscate a little bit better than you can do with Java or Kotlin code, then native code allows you to do that. It's much harder to reverse engineer native code. Now, when thinking about native code, most of us just think about C and C++ languages. And of course, most of the Android NDK code is written in C, in C++, but in addition, you can write in Rust. So Rust is a relatively new language that supposedly aims to replace C++. 
and uh, there is a uh, support from the Rust uh, creators, Rust community. There is a support for writing Rust code for Android Native Development Kit. I've never used it myself. I don't know whether it works or not, but at least they say that you can do that. And in addition, something that I didn't know before I set to create this lecture is that you can actually write assembly code as part of your NDK. And assembly is CPU arc specific. It's not like C and C++ that you write some general code and then it compiles to specific CPU uh, native machine code. But assembly is pretty much the machine code. So it's a very simple conversion from the assembly notation to machine code. And therefore, when you write assembly, you should write it in a CPU specific manner. And to be honest, I have a really hard time imagining a use case for writing assembly inside your Android applications, but probably someone did that at some point or another because they had to optimize the hell out of something. And I really hope that they succeeded because I can't imagine myself writing assembly for an Android application. And in general, in theory, any language that compiles to a native code can be supported inside Android Native Development Kit. Maybe it will require some support from the official uh, Google. Maybe this can be implemented as a third party support by let's say language authors, but theoretically any language that you can compile into a native code can be supported as part of Native Development Kit. But all in all, the most popular choice which accounts for the absolute majority of NDK usages are C or C++ programming languages. And this pretty much concludes what I wanted to share with you about Android Native Development Kit NDK in this video. The last message that I want to leave you with is that most Android applications don't need NDK. So don't jump into NDK development just because you find it so intriguing and so interesting. If you want to learn it and implement it in your side project, by all means, go ahead and do that. That would be very interesting. But most Android apps don't need NDK. And I myself had to use NDK for the first time many years into my career as a professional Android developer. So most Android applications don't need NDK, so don't over-engineer your projects if you are not completely sure that you need this very niche, but also in some cases, very powerful tool. That's it for today. See you next time.